I like all my students to know how to multiply and divide fractions and mixed numbers, but I also like them to be able to understand how they relate to real life problems. So here's an example. Joey McAwesome had half a gallon of gas and used one third of that gas to fill his lawnmower. How much gas does it take to fill Joey's lawnmower? A good way to solve this is to recognize that you're finding out what one third of one half is. We've learned in class that key phrase tells you a part of a whole means to multiply one third times one half. We know the standard procedure for multiplying fractions is to multiply your numerator times your numerator, your denominator times your denominator, and then if you can, you simplify and write your answer in lowest terms. In this case, your numerator and denominator have no common factors other than one, so your final answer is one sixth. So it takes one sixth of a gallon of gas to fill Joey's lawnmower. Another example might be Joey uses one third of hot cocoa mix for each mug of hot cocoa. If he has four and two thirds cups of mix, how many cups of cocoa can Joey make? Again, we're taking a large amount and breaking it into smaller portions, one third. And so what we're solving is four and two thirds divided by one third. Now there are two very important concepts you must remember in order to divide mixed numbers. The first is that you can't really divide mixed numbers. You have to first convert the mixed numbers into improper fractions. You multiply your denominator times your numerator, then add your current, your denominator times your whole number, then add your current numerator to find your new numerator. So three times four is 12 plus two is 14 over three. And then in this scenario, we also need to remember that when you divide fractions, you follow the remember to reciprocal, the right fraction, and then multiply process. And so we're going to rewrite this as 14 over 3, change to multiplication, and reciprocal that right fraction. We also learned earlier this year that you can simplify on the diagonal with multiplication if there's a common factor among a numerator and denominator. So because 3 and 3 both have a common factor of 3, we can divide them both by 3 and change into 1. 14 times 1 is 14, 1 times 1 is 1. The answer is 14 over 1, which means that Joey can make 14 cups of, or mugs of hot cocoa. We also want to make sure that we can fluently complete all decimal operations. And you'll see here that Joey buys a video game for $45. The cashier explains he must also pay $3.15 in sales tax. How much will Joey pay for the video game, including the sales tax? Now, I think we all know that we need to add this, but we must remember the key process for adding or subtracting decimal numbers is to line up the decimal point. The, the dollar amount, $45, even though there might not be a decimal point always shown, we know that the decimal point is at the end of the number. And so when we add the $3.15, we need to make sure we line up that decimal point. We've also learned in class that it's often helpful to hold the place of unused places with zeros. We can now add and bring our decimal point straight down into our sum, and Joey will spend $48.15 on his video game. The scale in the produce department at the market shows the weight of four apples is 1.2 pounds. If the apples cost $1.25 per pound, how much do the apples cost? First thing we want to realize is this, the amount of apples, the four apples, this is irrelevant in this question. We only need to focus on how many pounds of apples and how much they cost per pound. Because we're going to be finding that out by multiplying, we need to remember the rules for multiplying decimals. We know that you don't need to worry about lining up decimals when multiplying decimals. So we're going to do a slightly different procedure for multiplying decimals than we do for adding and subtracting. Once we've got it set up and ready to multiply, we can ignore our decimal points for the time being and just multiply normally. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 5 is 5. Note that I placed it in the correct placement, left that blank. 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 1 is 1. We're going to bring our answers down. And we do have an answer of 1500. 0, 0. We can't neglect that there are one, two, three decimal places to deal with here. So there should be one, two, three decimal places in our product. So keeping in mind that this is dealing with money, the American currency system only accounts for two decimal places or up to a hundredth of a dollar. So the correct answer would be $1.50 for the 1.2 pounds or the four apples. 
we learned that Alaska is 2.3 times the size of Texas. If Texas is 262,000 square miles, how large is Alaska? Just like in the previous problem, we're going to multiply to solve this. And we're going to multiply 262,000 times 2.3. And we're going to follow standard multiplication procedures. And as we finish, we're going to need to make sure that we look at the comma and the decimal point. Because we want to make sure we don't mix those up. We know, I did something wrong. No, we're good. We know that there are, there's only one decimal place here. So we're going to place that decimal place in our product. We're going to realize the correct answer is 602,600 is the uh, approximate size of Texas, of Alaska, because it's about 2.3 times the size of Texas. All right, and that's a reasonable answer. Note, if I had counted those decimal places there and put the answer here, we would have thought that um, that it was 602 square miles. That would be um, obviously an unreasonable answer. Our final question is actually going to answer our essential question on how division helps us in a real life situation. An appropriate serving size for a three-year-old is 0.75 ounces of Cheerios. How many servings are in a 14 ounce box? So to solve this, we would actually need to take the large amount, which is the 14 ounces, which is the full box, and divide it by 0.75. Now, a lot of students might make the mistake and mix up the order of our dividend and divisor here because we know 75 is larger than 14. But we've got to recognize that in this particular case, even though the, the numeral 7 and 5 are bigger than 14, this is our full amount, and this is what we're trying to find the portions of. So, knowing the rules for decimal division, we can't have a divisor that's a decimal number. We're instead going to move that decimal over two places to make the divisor a whole number following the patterns we've learned in class, we're going to do the same thing in our dividend, holding zeros for those places and bringing that decimal point straight up in the quotient. As we divide this, 75 goes into 140 only one time. 1 times 75 is 75, and the difference is 65. We bring down the zero. 75 goes into 650 nine times. No, no, eight times. Eight times 75 is 600 with a remainder of 50. At this point, we're going to need to bring down a zero and continue to divide. 75 goes into 500 six times. Six times 75 is 450. And we're going to realize that because our, our remainder is 50 again, that this is a repeating decimal. As long as we continue to divide, we'll continue to get sixes in our quotient. Because of that, we can draw a repeat bar above the six to let us know the answer is 18.6 repeated. If you were to write this in fraction form, it would be 18 and two-thirds of a serving. But for our purposes, we can definitely get 18 servings out of the 14-ounce box. All right, so hopefully students recognize how division can help you in a real-life situation, know how to fluently complete all decimal operations, and are able to multiply and divide fractions with mixed numbers.